Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be setting up our interactable blueprint. Now in this game, we are going to have interactables dotted around our environment. So you might have a door that you can open up. You might also have a fire pit that you can uh, turn on and off. And you might even have um, something that you can look at, interact with, and it displays some text on screen, okay? Uh, this interactable system is going to be very expansive and it's going to allow you to create pretty much whatever sort of interactable thing that you want. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a base interactable blueprint class. And this is basically going to be the uh, the basis for all other interactions, okay? So what we're gonna do is go to our content drawer and we are gonna create a new blueprint class of type actor. And this is gonna be called interactable, okay? Like so. We can then open this up inside of the blueprint editor and we're not going to do a lot in here, okay? We're going to do a few things, but it's going to seem a bit weird because it doesn't really in matter that much what we do right now because uh, none of it is really going to affect the game just yet. But what we want to do is we want to, first of all, uh, go to our event graph here and delete these three nodes that are made by default because we won't be needing those. And instead, we are going to create ourselves a custom event. Now, we've already worked with events in this course so far, okay, with our interaction events right here. Uh, whenever we move forwards, backwards, or something like that, or whenever the game starts, it uh, triggers an event. An event is basically a node that emits um, power, basically. It basically triggers the nodes in its chain, and that's what we're going to do here. So inside of our interactable, I'm going to go custom event, go down to where it says add custom event, and I'm going to call this one begin interaction. Now, begin interaction is going to be called when we are hovering over this interactable. And when we're hovering over this interactable, we then press E or whatever key to trigger it. And that is then going to initiate the interaction by calling this event right here. Now, what are we going to do from this interaction here? Well, first of all, let's create some variables. And these variables are going to be the first one, this is going to be can interact. And the second one is going to be single interaction. Now with can interact, this is basically going to be a true or false for whether or not we can actually interact with this interactable. So for example, there might be a door that we can only open once. And once we open it, we don't want to be able to interact with it again. Okay, we only want to be able to interact with it once. And that is going to be um, basically setting can interact to false after the initial interaction, thus not letting us do it again. And I'm going to click compile because we want to set this can interact default value to be true. Okay, so make that true. And then for single interaction, this is going to be something that is instance um, dependent, okay? And basically what that means is whenever we drag in a new uh, blueprint into our level, we want to decide whether or not this is going to be a single interaction. Because something like a door, for example, we only want to interact with once, yet something that displays text on our screen, maybe there's a note on the ground or something like that, uh, we want to be able to read that as many times. We want to be able to interact with that as many times as possible. So what I'm going to do is on single interaction, I'm going to go and set instance edit editable to be true. And we'll just keep the default at false for now though. Okay. So then on begin interact, we want to plug this into a branch node. And this branch node is going to check to see if can oh, if single interaction is true. Okay, so if single interaction is true, then what we want to do is set can interact to false. Okay, like so. Now, what we're doing here is basically when we interact with whatever object this is, we are checking to see if single interaction is true. Now, if it is true, then that means we want to run whatever interaction logic there is and then set can interact to false because we don't want to be able to interact with this object again. Yet, if single interaction is false and we can interact with this as many times as we wish, we're not going to be setting it to false, okay? We're just going to not be doing anything. Now, you may be thinking that, okay, we have all this, but this doesn't really do anything. We're just changing the value of two variables. And the reason why is because this interactable uh, blueprint is not going to be what we add to our levels. Rather, we are going to inherit from it 
Remember, when we create a new blueprint, we can choose a parent class. Well, for our doors, for our uh, fires, for our notes, this interactable blueprint is going to be that parent class, okay? And from here, we are going to extend this begin interaction event in order to add our own custom logic at the end, okay? So we're just setting up all the base stuff right now for later on when we actually want to start adding things such as, you know, doors opening and closing, notes appearing on screen. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to compile, save, and then quit out of this window right here because we don't really need to be using it anymore. And instead, we're going to go back to our main level and we are going to create a new blueprint and this is going to be a test interaction, okay? Just a, a, an object that we can interact with and then print something on screen. So I'm going to create a new blueprint class right here. I'm going to make it of type, not any of these common ones, but if we go down to all classes, we can search for interactable and select that as our parent class. And then I'm going to call this one test interactable, okay? Because we're not really going to be having this in our final game. Rather, this is just to test the actual functionality of the interactable. We can then open this up. And for this, we're just going to add in a box component right here. I know it worked, I know, a cube actually. So we're going to add in a cube component right here. And then inside of event graph, you'll notice that, you know, nothing has really changed. So instead, what we need to do is we are going to select these uh, sort of nodes that are already here, delete those, and we're going to right click and we're going to search for begin interaction, okay? Add event begin interaction. So what we are doing here is we are basically um, not creating an event, but rather we are sort of overriding the event that is being called on the base interactable blueprint, okay? So basically, instead of the one on the interactable blueprint being called, we're sort of snatching that away and going to be reading the value and executing it ourselves. Now, we still want those blueprints where we are setting the variables, um, the can interact and single interaction. Uh, we still want that to run. So in order for that to run, we need to right click on this event and we are gonna go down to where it says add call to parent function. And then this is gonna pop up here. We wanna connect it like so. And then all the logic from here, we then want to output from this parent interact node. And all we're gonna do is just go print string and we're just gonna say interact happened. Okay, so now when we ever interact with this cube, it should just say interact happened and that should print to our screen. So I'm gonna compile, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna go back to our main level and actually drag this out into our scene right here. And if we press play, you'll of course see that, yep, nothing happens because we haven't set up the ability for our player to detect and work with interactions. And that is what we're gonna be looking at in the next lesson. So thanks for watching. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna set it up so that our player can detect these interactable objects. Now, the first thing we need to do is go to our project settings because we need to add in a new input. But this isn't gonna be an axis mapping, rather it's gonna be an action mapping. Now, the difference between the two is axis mappings, these events basically output a value, okay, between negative one and one. Whereas an action mapping just outputs um, an event when a certain button is pressed. In this case, our interact button. So I'm gonna call this, ac uh, this action mapping interact, and I'm gonna click on this little keyboard icon and press E. So whenever we press E on an interactable, that should interact with it. So we can save that, go over to our player blueprint. Now inside of our player blueprint, um, I did actually encapsulate these nodes inside of a comment. You can do that by selecting a group of nodes, right clicking and going create comment from selection. Now, inside of our player blueprint, what we need to do is we first of all need to know what we are currently looking at, okay? And to do that, what we're gonna do is we are going to get the event tick node, bring that down here. Now, the event tick node, as you may know already, this gets triggered every single frame. So if we're running our game at 60 frames a second, this event tick node is gonna go out 60 times per second. And what we want to do every frame is basically shoot a line from the center of our camera forwards a certain distance, okay? Um, so we might want to shoot it forward like two meters or so. 
And if an interactable hits this line, then we want to basically set that as our current interactable. And if we press the interact button, so if we press E and we have a current interactable, then we want to try and interact with it. So from event tick, I'm going to plug this into a line trace by channel node. Now, this is a pretty big node. It's got a bunch of inputs. Um, the only inputs we really need are the start and the end. Okay, so the start is going to be where this line begins and end is going to, of course, be where it ends. For start, we want this to be our camera's position and the end is going to basically be a couple meters in front of the camera. So for this, what we're going to do is we are going to get our camera, drag that in like so, get camera, and we're going to drag off from it and go get world location. Now get world location is going to basically be the position of our camera, which we can plug into start right here as the start location. Now for end, this is going to be a bit different. Okay, we're going to need a few more nodes for this. So what I'm going to do is from camera, I'm going to go get world rotation. Okay, so this is going to get the rotation of our camera. And from this, we can then get the forward vector. So from the return value, I'm going to go get forward vector. And this is going to basically get the forward direction that our camera is looking in. Okay, so after we know what direction our camera is looking in, we want to then multiply that vector by a number such as 250. Now, you may notice that when I put this in a multiply node, it is multiplying it by another vector. Now, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that pin and go convert pin to a float and set this to be 250. Then we can add this to an addition node, an add node. And basically, we just want to add our world location to this new uh, vector and then plug that into end right here. So basically what we're doing here is we are shooting a line from our camera's origin uh, in the direction of our camera by 2.5 meters. Okay, so there we go. So now that we have done that, what we can do is go to the right hand side, the output of our line trace by channel node. And this is where we are going to start looking at stuff. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to get the out hit and plug this into a break hit result. Now this break hit result, because um, this out hit contains a lot of information that we can use. And as you can see, this has all these different outputs that we can retrieve. Okay, so we can know, for example, the time that this hit, the distance away, the location, the normal vector, uh, the material, the actor that it hit. Okay, we can know a lot of information about what we are hitting with this line trace. But the only thing we really need is going to be the hit actor. We only really need to know what thing we hit, okay? Uh, if we hit anything at all. So I'm going to drag out from hit actor and plug this into a cast to interactable node. Now, cast to interactable, we give it an object and it tries to convert it to a interactable blueprint type. Now, our test interactable blueprint, that has the parent class of interactable, so that would convert over well. Yet, if we're looking at the floor, for example, uh, that doesn't, that isn't of type interactable, so it is going to output the cast failed output right here. Whereas, if it is successful, it's going to output from the top one. So, we want to carry on the flow from our line trace node into this cast interactable node. And we can actually close this break hit result node up a bit, so it's a bit neater. And then what we want to do is if this uh, cast to interactable was successful, so if we did actually hit an interactable object, we want to plug this into a branch node. The reason why is because even though we hit an interactable, we want to make sure that we can actually interact with it because if we can't interact with it, we don't want it, we basically want to ignore it. So how do we check that? Well, as you can see here, we have the as interactable output and I'm going to drag that out and go can interact. So we are going to get the can interact value from that blueprint and plug that into the condition like so. Okay. So now if we are able to interact with this blueprint, with this interactable, it's going to be true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. So if we can, then what we're going to do is we actually need to create ourselves a variable. And this variable is going to keep track of whatever uh, interactable we are currently looking at. So I'm going to create a new variable here called current interactable. And this is going to be of type 
if we go up here in the details panel, it's going to be of type interactable, okay, which is right here. Now, we can click compile, and current interactable, we want to drag that in and go set current interactable, plug this into the branch's true output, and the value is going to be the as interactable right here on the cast, okay? So basically we are setting this current interactable variable to be whatever interactable we are hitting as long as we can actually interact with it. So there we go. Uh, then what we want to do is make sure that if we are no longer looking at an interactable or if we're not looking at um, an object that can be interacted with, we want to set that to be nothing, okay? So I'm gonna drag current interactable in again, make a set node here drag the cast failed into that, and also drag in the branch false output into that as well, okay? So now what should happen is if we are looking at an interactable that we can interact with, it is going to have this have it assigned to this variable right here. Otherwise, if we are not looking at an interactable or if we are looking at an interactable that cannot be interacted with, it's going to set this to basically be nothing, okay? So there we go. Now, that's a lot of nodes right there to look at, uh, but let's continue on real quick with setting up the ability to actually press E on this object and interact with it. So I'm going to create ourselves right here, the interact, uh, this is going to be the event interact input right here. And then when we press it, we want to check to see is valid. Okay, and the is valid node, we give it an object, and if that object has a value, it's going to return is valid, otherwise it's going to be is not valid. So what we want to do is the object, of course, is going to be our current interactable. So we can plug that in like so. And if this interactable is valid, so if this current interactable does have a, an actual value, then we want to go ahead and, whoops, from current interactable, call the begin interaction event like so. So that's what we want to do right there. We can now click compile save, go back to our main level, and if I press play, you'll see I can look around. Now, if I press E, nothing's gonna happen. If I look at the ground, nothing's gonna happen. But if I walk up to this cube and press E on it, you'll see that it says interact happened right there, okay? And if I look away from the cube and stop pressing E, you'll see the messages are no longer appearing. If I press E on the cube and I slowly walk away, you'll see that after a certain distance, it stops because we're too far away. So you can basically imagine that there's a laser pointer in the middle of our eyes shooting forward about two and a half meters, okay? Now, if I select this interactable and in the details panel, I go down and enable single interaction and press play, you'll see that I can only interact with it once, okay? I press E, it says interact happen, but I can no longer interact with it again. So that is just a way that we can set it up so that we can only interact with an object once or as many times as we wish. Um, really, we can create anything such as doors, fire pits we can turn on and off, and like I said before, notes that we can then read.